So if you ask the model like, hey, here's a loan application, do you think the model will give them a loan or not? The human designer isn't going to be able to say, oh yeah, because I wrote the code, I know that they'll get the loan or that they won't because on line 17 of the program, you know, they haven't been in their current job long enough. The designer is going to say, I don't know, like run the model on it and we'll find out whether they get a loan or not. And you know, maybe more to the point, if, if you ask the question to the designer, well, is it possible that this model that you built systematically rejects the loans of creditworthy black applicants compared to creditworthy white applicants? Again, the answer will be like, I, I don't know. Why don't we try it and see? Okay? Or is it possible that just even you know, releasing the details of this model or even using it in the field might leak the private information about the individuals used to train the model? Again, the answer would be, I don't know, okay? Because I sort of oversaw this pipeline, but I didn't, un I didn't you know, specifically engage in the automated optimization of this objective function defined by a very large complicated data set, okay? And so in this way, even though hammers and algorithms are both human designed artifacts for specific purposes, you know, algorithms are quite different from a moral and ethical standpoint in that, you know, any ethical misbehaviors about these algorithms are quite removed from the individual who oversaw this process. And also their flexibility of purpose, right? You know, a hammer is kind of designed, you know, under normal circumstances to do exactly one thing very well that everybody completely understands. An algorithm is much more complicated and has much greater flexibility of purpose. And so it's much harder to assign blame to any part of this pipeline or to understand what the consequences will be. So in our book, what we try to argue is that um, one important component of the solutions to these problems, in addition to the ones I mentioned before that are more about kind of social change or institutional change, is that we need to embed social values that we care about directly into the code of our algorithms. And you know, if there's sort of one takeaway from our book, it's that we're here to tell you that that is scientifically possible. Um, not in all cases, and there will also be costs and trade-offs that I'll talk about a little bit. But the road is clear to making our algorithms better than they are today. I didn't say perfect, but better than they are today. And so if you're going to tell an algorithm how to avoid violations of privacy or of fairness or other social norms like that you might care about, like accountability or interpretability, the first step is not to sort of go write computer code. It's to think extremely hard about definitions. Because if I'm going to tell an algorithm, you know, the thing about algorithms is that you can't leave anything uncertain. You can't sort of say like, well, you know, um, you know, make sure that you're not unfair to this population. You need to really say like, what does unfair mean? And how do you measure an unfairness? And how much, how much unfairness is too much, OK? And so one of the interesting exercises about this kind of you know, scientific research is that even though scholars and you know, practitioners um, many centuries or even eons before people like me came along have thought very deeply about things like fairness, for instance. So, you know, computer scientists are late to the study of fairness. <laughs> Philosophers, economists, um, uh, social scientists, all of them have thought much longer and more deeply about fairness than computer scientists. But what's different is that they never had to think about it in so precise a way that you could tell it to a computer program. And sometimes there's great virtue in just that rigor by itself, even if you don't go on and do anything with it. Because sometimes thinking that precisely about, what you, about definitions exposes flaws in your thinking that were only going to be exposed by being that precise. And I'll give concrete examples um, as we go. Um, so the basic you know, kind of research agenda that Aaron and I and our students and many others in the machine learning community have been engaged in in the past few years is kind of going through this process of thinking about different social properties or ethical properties we would like from our algorithms, thinking hard about what the right definition or as it might be definitions should be, and then thinking about how do you implement them in an algorithm, and then what is the cost to other things that you might care about. So, to preview one big message of our book. Um, nobody should expect that by asking for fairness from an algorithm 
or, ac or, or privacy from an algorithm that you won't degrade its accuracy. Because, you know, it's an additional constraint. If the optimal model ignoring fairness for making loans accurately happens to be discriminatory against some minority, then eradicating that discrimination by definition is going to make the error worse, okay? Um, and so there are going to be like real costs. There are going to be monetary costs for the company that adopt the solutions that we suggest and hard decisions to be made about how much to adopt them in exchange for how much profitability, for example. <laughs>